Hello everyone, and welcome to another video tutorial for Lightarama S5. In today's video, we'll talk about how the Sequence Editor, Visualizer, and Pixel Editor from S4 combine to become the Sequencer in S5. If you're considering an upgrade from S4 and are nervous that you won't understand how to use the new program, this video will help show you that using S5 really isn't as difficult as you think. Throughout this video, we'll discuss differences in vocabulary between S4 and S5. All of the S4 features still exist in S5, they might just have a new name to better represent the new functionality that was added in the upgrade. The first new word is Preview. The Preview Editor, which is housed within the sequencer, is the upgraded version of the Visualizer. In S4, if you made a channel assignment change, you had to make that change in the Visualizer and every single one of your sequences. If you didn't have the same channel configuration organization for all of your sequences, that made the process take even more time. The preview in S5 is now the one location for all of that information. It replaces both your visualizer and channel configuration file. When you create a sequence, you'll assign it to use a specific preview. If you need to make a change in channel assignment, you'll make the change in one place, your preview, and it will be applied to every sequence that's using it for reference. A common misconception is that you would have to recreate your entire layout if you switch to S5, which is not true. You can directly import your S4 visualizer or even your S3 block style animation file directly into S5 for conversion. Once you import your visualizer or animator file, you may want to make changes because of all the cleaner looking prop shapes, but it's not a requirement at all. Just make sure that all of the unit ID and channel assignments are the same as the sequences you're about to import, which should be the case already if they matched in S4. If you never made either of those files in S4, it's strongly recommended that you create a preview from scratch before you import your sequences. Unlike in S4, a virtual representation of your display is a requirement in S5, which also helps with sequence quality since you can actually see the results immediately when creating your effects. One of the main reasons people struggle with an upgrade to S5 is because they miss that very important step of having an S5 preview ready before trying to import sequences. Once the preview is complete, you'll locate one of your S4 files and put it through the conversion process to upgrade to S5. If your preview is properly prepared, import should be relatively simple and you won't have to deal with any archived props. A new LOR edit file will be created and your LMS file will remain completely intact as a backup. Please watch our specific tutorial on importing sequences if you have additional questions about this process, like assigning unmatched or even matched channels to a different element in your display as you transition to S5. If you're in a time crunch for this season and never made a visualizer or animator file, you can directly import your LMS files and select the Start a New Preview option instead on the import screen. Once your sequence loads, you need to go to Sequence, Manage Archived Props, then select all of your elements, and select Add to Preview. All of the elements will appear as dots in the center of your preview screen. It's not very useful for seeing what your show will look like, but it's a good option if you just need to add your sequences to a playlist this year and don't plan on making any edits to the sequences themselves. In order to move forward after the season ends and create additional sequences or modify effects, you'll need to edit every single dot into its correct shape. It's much more time consuming to create a preview using this method than creating one from scratch, so this option is only recommended as a last resort. The sequencer itself can seem overwhelming because the sequence editor and pixel editor have been combined, but once you know where all the buttons moved, it will look a lot more similar to S4 than you think. One of the most important changes in S5 is that tracks from S4 were replaced with something called grid configurations. This might look like a replacement for channel configurations, but remember that all of that channel data is now stored in your preview, so it applies to all sequences. You don't make channel changes down here in the grid per sequence file. A grid configuration is simply the organization of your props so that it's easier for you to sequence your shows and you don't have to see every channel at once. Just view the ones you're working on at a specific time. Instead of having multiple tracks like you would in S4, you could have multiple grid configurations, except in reality, you should only need one. S5 allows you to assign a prop to multiple groups, meaning a mini blue bush could be in a group of your bushes, all of your blue items, and a group of your entire display. 
In S4, you would have had to create multiple tracks to achieve the previous example. In the S5 grid, you would just add all of those groups to your grid configuration, which would have been created back in your preview, where channel information is stored. If you place an effect on any one of these rows, it will automatically apply to anywhere else this prop exists in the grid. If you look at the toolbar itself, you'll see some familiar options. In S4, when you clicked on the grid, the active effect was always placed. If you'd like to use that same style of sequencing, just set your on mouse click option to create, meaning you'll create an effect anytime you click. If you want to try sequencing with keyboard shortcuts, have the select action active, click anywhere in the grid, then use the proper shortcut. You can also use the right click menu to find effects when you use select. The buttons in the center should look familiar. Here's on, off, fade up, fade down, and intelligent fade. These buttons say max and min because they stand for maximum and minimum intensity, which is located right next to these options instead of in separate pop-out menus like they were in S4. Changing these buttons to max and min instead of on and off eliminated the need for a dedicated intensity button and menu as well. For example, just change the maximum value to 50% then create an effect at the maximum value. No need to have those extra menus open anymore to change value settings for fades or intensity. Just set the maximum and minimums right here. Moving slightly over in the lower toolbar, here are your commands for toggle, fill, and chase, and your options for shimmer and twinkle are over here. All of these options can be applied with click to create or with keyboard shortcuts. This effect type area helps keep unneeded options hidden if you're just working with AC channels, leave this effect type on channel and you won't see any pixel related options. This will help keep your toolbar looking as similar as possible to S4. If you want to use color effects, selecting this option will make all of the relevant effect choices appear. If you want to simplify this menu even further, go to Sequencer Preferences, then Editing, then choose to only show essential buttons for color selection. If you select Motion, which stands for Motion Effects, this opens the door to all of the options in the S4 Pixel Editor, plus all of the updated pixel effect options that were added in S5. If you have no RGB in your display, you can ignore both of these buttons and keep your sequencer screen relevant to you. You can now also directly access Superstar through the sequencer if you've purchased the add-on license instead of manually connecting your Superstar creations back into the sequence. Another feature in S4 was the buttons in the toolbar to place effects in the foreground or background of the sequence. These options simply moved to the right-click menu and expanded in the number of choices available. Instead of just being able to place effects in the foreground and background, you can now also alter all of the selected effects at once, like changing their fade values, instead of doing them one at a time like you would have had to in S4. A more hidden option in S4 was the Paste Special menu, where you can make choices about the source and destination of your copy and pastes in the foreground or background of your sequence. That button is now out in the open in the top toolbar, and even includes additional options to flip your commands horizontally and vertically before you click Paste. Also in the top toolbar, here are the options for Paste Mode in general. Instead of being on the left side of the editor, they're now simply at the top, and your clipboards are right above that menu. A little farther over are the options for slowing down and speeding up your audio. No more going to a top menu to find the option. All the way over to the right is the menu to switch between your timing tracks, which was a little more over to the left in S4. Up along the top are similar menus with slightly different names. In the sequence menu, you'll find the options for adding a media file and changing sequence length. You'll also find the new option to add beat channels, meaning no more unassigned channels from S4 to mark out what you're hearing in the music. That's now a dedicated feature. In the Tools menu, you'll find all of your familiar audio wizards as well as sequencer preferences. If you're looking to use S5 exactly as you used S4, that's really all you need to know. A few buttons moved around, you only have to make channel changes in one place, your preview, instead of in your visualizer and all of your sequences, and you can save yourself an immense amount of time when sequencing by using a grid configuration instead of having multiple tracks, since S5 allows you to assign an element to multiple groups. If you'd like to explore all of the new features in S5 and find other ways to save you time and improve your sequencing experience, just take a look at all of the other videos on our channel. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.